All right, well, thank you guys for having me. Uh, like you said, my name is Brock Smith with Invest Nebraska. I'm the investment associate there and internal counsel. It's kind of fun to be back here. I graduated from the university about three years ago uh, with a joint degree in, from the law school and the MBA program. Before that, I was uh, an economics major here, so it's kind of fun to be lecturing to a bunch of professors now. Um, it's a change of pace. Uh, so what is Invest Nebraska? Invest Nebraska is a nonprofit venture development fund. Um, we are independent from the state of Nebraska, but we are funded by the state of Nebraska. We contract with Joe Fox through the DED, who will be your next speaker, um, to get our funding. Uh, we invest in high growth companies throughout the state of Nebraska. Our typical investment ranges from about one hundred or one hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand um, dollars, and we require a one to one match. So what that means is, if you come to us and you're asking for, if you're looking to raise three hundred thousand dollars for your project, the max that we would be able to fund for you is one hundred and fifty thousand, and you need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of outside funding in order to get funding from us. We typically like to make that ratio a little bit better. So maybe not one to one, but two to one or three to one, right? The more you're raising and the less you're asking from us, um, the, the more people we can help fund and uh, get deals done within the state. We're industry agnostic, so often we get questions. Uh, are you software only? Are, do you do biotech? Do you do ag tech? We do any industry uh, that is commercializing a product within the state of Nebraska. We're one of the few funds within the state that is industry agnostic. Um, as far as I know, we're the only uh, venture fund within the state that's industry agnostic. Um, so we've considered deals in the past that are in uh, robotics, in agriculture, in manufacturing, food tech, food science, uh, animal science. Uh, so get kind of across the board, as well as your typical software plays, whether it's marketplaces, e-commerce, SaaS, um, we'll do pretty much anything. We both lead and follow on deals, which means that we'll either negotiate terms with you uh, when you walk through the door. So we take, through our financing, equity or debt positions, and when we do that, we uh, are willing to negotiate the round with you. We have the internal resources to do that, and or we will follow on, which means if you found an outside investor uh, that is leading the deal, you know, like I mentioned earlier, for a $300,000 raise, uh, that $150,000 investment said, I want 10% of your company for $150,000. If you've agreed to that when you come to us, what we're going to do is look at the terms of that deal, and if we agree to match, we match the terms of that deal as well. So we would also take 10%. Uh, now, we may not agree with the terms of the deal um, if we're following, so there might be some discrepancy there that we have to go through, but typically we're willing to do both as long as they're reasonable. Um, and like I said, we have various, various financing options available. So not only will we make equity investment, um, we'll do your traditional convertible debt for early startup phase, we'll do some mezzanine lending. Uh, we may throw in some payments and kinds as different uh, forms of uh, uh, kind of an interest bearing debt. Um, we might uh, do your traditional loan. So if you're a, a smaller scale company, we've got some micro loan funds that are just your, your normal traditional debt, like you might pay on your home loan, where you can amortize it over the life of the loan. Um, so so we, since we have a bunch of options available to us, it doesn't necessarily mean we're only doing venture investment. We may be doing more of your lifestyle company for certain regions of the state that are maybe uh, more in need of that kind of funding or uh, classified as a distressed area by the state. Um, so companies coming to us, we typically want them to be uh, beyond the prototype MVP phase. Now, that is somewhat complicated because every industry is different as to what the prototype MVP phase is, right? If you're uh, putting together some sort of healthcare product that's gonna go through um, a very long government approval process, it might be 10 years down the road before you've actually uh, uh, gotten the right approvals in order to go sell your product. So we're not asking you to wait for that because if you're doing something like that, you're probably raising a hundred million dollars. So if we're looking at maybe a healthcare or a surgical um, tool that has to go through some sort of clearance, we'll fund before you're actually in the commercialization stage because that's just the reality of that business life. But if you're doing something more like software, we're going to want a significant portion or hopefully most of your prototype, your beta, um, finished, completed, so that you're ready to go out and sell the product. 
what our funds are designed to be used for is to grow and sell, right? We're here to help you guys go make money on whatever technology you've developed. That's the main goal, is to generate revenue, create jobs, and uh, uh, ultimately, I guess, make money for everyone involved in the program so that we can then go on and do more things. Um, so other things that we do in addition to investing, uh, we help develop entrepreneurial ecosystems, and uh, yeah, that's a pretty broad term, but what it means is we help uh, host events, we sponsor different organizations uh, that develop that interconnection of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. There's a thing called entrepreneurial density, which essentially says innovation occurs in pockets. And so uh, when you get innovators together, they typically continue to talk about new ideas, and it's, it typically springboards companies and in innovation and development. Um, obviously, you guys know there are dense entrepreneurial hubs around the country, like San Francisco, right outside San Francisco, Boulder, Colorado, Austin, Texas, uh, even Salt Lake City, uh, Utah is becoming more of one. So the goal is to create kind of that dense entrepreneurial ecosystem and hub. Um, we work on entrepreneurial infrastructure. So we're a part of a project here at the university, which you'll see even uh, the wet lab space on there. Um, with Innovation Campus and a few other uh, community participants where we se help secure a grant from the federal government uh, for $1.5 million to put in a wet lab space here. It's 10,000 square feet, I believe, uh, of which 5,000 will be used for uh, kind of your biotech entrepreneurial endeavors. So it's a wet lab space for your, um, you know, a lot of companies that may start out of here. One of our portfolio companies, Advents, is committed to using the space uh, once it's ready to go. So we even get uh, kind of a springboard company in there at launch, which is nice. Um, we have the Tech Hire Initiative, which is another um, kind of infrastructure thing, I would say, that we do across the state, which is development of tech talent. In this case, it is software talent in central and western Nebraska. Um, right now it's based in Kearney, but we've applied for a $4 million grant with the U.S. government uh, to train 400 tech workers by 2020 in central Nebraska. We had the first class go through there already, of which uh, there were four individuals. Uh, the four individuals were selected from more than 300 applicants, uh, and the 300 applicants had to have certain requirements, um, mostly based on uh, lower wage jobs, essentially is what it comes down to and some diversity reasons to get them into the class. But the, the goal is to springboard these individuals onto higher wage uh, with higher ceiling jobs throughout the course of their career, right? So if the average salary of an individual in central Nebraska is $30,000, the goal is to put them something that immediately propels them to thirty-eight or 40000 but has that upper ceiling of eighty five, dollars $100,000 if they can move on to that software engineer level. Um, so we're developing potentially high wage, uh, high tech talent in the inside rural communities in the state. Um, and then finally, uh, the last initiative that we've been working on is a network of funders throughout the state. So one thing that we always, like everyone uh, in the entrepreneurial community uh, has questions about or potentially even complains about is, where do I get money to commercialize my project, right? You say you need match funds, but I don't have match funds. Where can I go find these? So we've developed a network now of over 100 angels um, that are willing to consider deals. Uh, we don't refer out unless we're really high on the product, the person, um, and your stage of business where we actually think you're ready for investment. Uh, but we've developed this network to consider deals that flow through um, to connect innovators within the state with potential money that fits uh, their particular business endeavor. Um, and so that Northeast Angel group was the first group we formed. It's a group of about 20 individuals around the North Fork, uh, Columbus area. Uh, we're working on one right now in southeastern Nebraska and one out in the Scotts Bluff area. Um, so those networks, uh, they are not the Nebraska Angels per se, but they should, uh, and they won't meet regularly like the Nebraska Angels do locally. I don't know if anybody knows who they are, but if you do, they won't meet quite like those, but they will consider and fund deals throughout the state. So uh, the goal is to develop more funding for your ideas uh, over the next eight to 10 years. Um, so, some metrics. What do we do at Invest in Nebraska? Um, one of the important parts of being a nonprofit venture development fund is that community engagement side. So, last year we sat down and listened to 118 entrepreneurial pitches, so a little over two a week. 
Um, we gave, we provided 3,756 hours of free assistance, essentially uh, feedback, commentary, uh, maybe for some of our com uh, por potential portfolio companies or portfolio companies, we walked through putting together a better business plan or a pitch deck that they then took out to other investors. Um, and then we actually internally reviewed, so instead of just uh, maybe saying no immediately, we reviewed 70 business plans, gave feedback, and then either said yes or no to those investments. To give you an idea, we reviewed 70 that we actually took a deep dive into, um, but we only funded uh, 12 deals last year, so that means we turned 58 of those away that we uh, helped kind of move down the line a little bit. Some of the investment metrics over the last, uh, that should not be a single in there since the other ones are double ones. Uh, should be a million. Uh, $9.3 million in the last four years now in 51 different companies across the state, um, which has been matched by $26.6 million of investment. So in that initial round where we invested, we've got about a, a three to one leverage ratio there. And then it was followed on by 36, uh, almost $37 million. So that means like after we funded a company, they went on to commercialize and then went out and found other investors willing to stick almost $37 million into these companies. Uh, in total, so we have this double bottom line return mission, right? One is that economic uh, development side, and the other is the investment return. But on the economic development side, one of the big things, uh, you know, I, when I go around, I, I like to say that Nebraska does not have a job problem. Everybody's employed in Nebraska, pretty much. If you try to find a job, you'll figure out where to go. But what we do have in Nebraska is a wage problem. The average wage in Nebraska is $41,000, or maybe it's 44,000 now that it's 2016, but it was 41,000 when I got this metric a year ago, and uh, the average salary of portfolio companies is almost $90,000 right now. So we're talking about as tax revenue for the state, uh, more discretionary funding to inject into local economies, and essentially a better living condition for communities around the state, which is, you know, I, I think good for all of us, whether or not you're a part of the company. Um, so some of the companies we've invested in, uh, I'll, I'll put them up here. Normally I'd like to highlight a few of them. Uh, I, I guess I can here because some of you might know them at the university. Dr. Ferrer talked earlier. Uh, Virtual Incision is a portfolio company, uh, which they're right in the middle there. Um, Another company that's kind of fun is E3 Banking out of Omaha. Um, they are uh, rapidly expanding. They added 60 employees within the last year and look to add another 50 or 60 this next year. Um, so you're talking about uh, rapid high wage job growth there. Um, Quantified Ag is located here uh, on Innovation Campus. Uh, we recently made a second investment in them, Suji's Cuisine. Also, I think, I, I don't know if they're located, are they located here? Yep, located here. Um, and so they, they provide Korean food to uh, Costco's throughout the South uh, and are hopefully going to make an exciting announcement soon. Blue Prairie Brands is uh, through the university system but out of Scott's Bluff. Um, and so they're, they're working on a chicory root uh, powder that is less bitter than normal and they put uh, that powder into foods as a replacement of kind of your, your fiber material. Um, that is typically in there. It's supposed to be healthier, uh, and cheaper both. Uh, and for those rural farmers out there, they're able to grow chicory root rather than uh, sugar beets, which is two to three times more expensive than a given year, uh, which means more profit and revenue to the farmer. So uh, it's kind of a win-win on both sides for the economic development. But So everybody that we seem to interact with does something uh, fun or special. If you have questions about these companies, I'd love to answer them. Um, we have a pretty diverse board of directors, uh, and we try to keep it that way. When we fill the board, we look for one or two people um, from every sector. And so uh, Dr. Michael Dixon is at Unimed, uh, and he obviously is kind of that scientist university connection both for us. Um, Richard Beyer is uh, president and CEO of the Nebraska Bankers Association. Chris Roth is CEO of Rinky Manufacturing, so he's got a lot of ag sector experience. Um, which is really important for an investment group in Nebraska. Uh, we have a, uh, just one now, Dan Curran, um, who's with the DED. Uh, Paul Urich, who I would say is a private professional with software founder. Uh, Faith Larson, an investment individual specialist. She's a former attorney that now does uh, private equity of sorts. And then Sil Orsi, who's an attorney. He's kind of our, our leverage for international experience. 
and funding rounds. He's done both, but he uh, he now is one of the leading attorneys at Nebraska on international trade deals. Uh, and then uh, Jackie Ostrowicki at the bottom, another university PR connection. She's pretty heavy in the, the marketing PR side. So um, with that, uh, I'll leave it open to questions. I have my email here. Feel free to reach out with that. Um, there always tend to be 100 questions. So feel free to ask whatever you want. Or I did a good job. Yeah. Yes. Can you maybe explain a little bit about how uh, university faculty might start an interaction with the best Nebraska? Sure. So uh, if you're sitting here today, feel free to shake my hand. Um, beyond that, email, phone call, we're open to, uh, you know, I love it when university professors reach out because um, one of the hardest parts for us typically is finding um, qualified management teams or scientists that are knowledgeable about their industry. And so when we do have university professors reach out, um, we feel that there's automatically some sort of validation there as to the actual scientific uh, or um, the uh, potentially product backbone that is being commercialized. Um, so if we feel good about that. Uh, you can email me here, uh, call us, our website, you can email through the website, um, or you know, you can talk to a number of faculty members at the university. If you go through Innovation Campus or New Tech, um, they have our contact information as well and have the ability to reach out to us. We've worked in, I think, a pretty close relationship to them over the last six years or so. So can you talk a little bit about the differences between Invest Nebraska and Nebraska Angels? Yes. Okay. Um, so Nebraska Angels are a group of angel investors, which are individuals that are high net worth, um, that are interested in uh, you know investing in startups or privately held companies. Um, Invest Nebraska is a more of a venture fund model when it comes to investing, uh, which can be a little bit different when you approach the two. Normally your angel is looking to invest 25,000, maybe if in, in Nebraska, 12 and a half, combined with another person to get to 25. Um, but then when you get the angel uh, group, you know, a syndicated deal might get you two, three, 400, or I think one deal got to 700,000 through the Nebraska angels. Um, so oftentimes we work together with the Nebraska angels as a match, but you're gonna get more of like, uh, individual investment that t tend to be smaller chunks. You may get some sort of um, industry expert through the Nebraska Angels, right? So uh, for instance, uh, if you're in healthcare or healthcare IT, um, there are five or six individuals on the Nebraska Angels that specialize in that and help commercialize. Like They take, uh, I would say, a heavier hand in the business approach, whereas we might stay out of it unless we think there's uh, some situational trouble because we're not experts on your business. We invest in you to be experts in your business. Some of these angels want to participate, um, and that varies. I, I wouldn't say that all of the angels want to do that. Some of them like to <laughs> sit out, but um, you know they, they are capable of potentially making those industry contacts and helping. So I see a lot of value to going through them. Um, we're also different in that we focus on more of your traditional venture funding uh, mechanics and deals. So as you're going through the process with us, we may help you get to that next level, the, the Series A, Series B round, whatever it is, with a larger fund outside of the state. So that's one thing I didn't mention earlier, is in addition to the in-state network of funders, we've been developing a large network of out-of-state funders capable of injecting 10, 15, 20 million dollars at a time into a company that is meeting the right metrics. Um, so we are working hard to maintain and develop new relationships in that, uh, that particular space. Yeah. Uh, what stage would you suggest that we approach uh, after we have a business plan? Or? Um, yeah, so we're, we're definitely after you have a business plan. If approached, uh, so one thing that I would say is no matter when you approach us, make it very clear what you are looking for, right? Um, if, if what you think you're looking for is investment, we're probably going to be expecting an investment-ready company. 
Um, and what I mean by that is it's got a business plan together, it's potentially validated their product, has a working product, um, and I would say maybe more of like a, a venture development, venture capital investment ready company. There's a significant validation to the product. Um, if you're looking for some advice or some connections or want to talk through something, I think it's nice to state that up front because then we're, we, we know what the parameter of that conversation is before we begin, uh, and then we come in with a different lens, right? So potentially we help you get to a point where you're ready for investment. I don't know if that answers your question. You can talk to us whenever, just be clear about why.